question now is that the, this bill be read a second time. I give the call to the member for Solomon. Thank you very much, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And I rise today to give my support to the Australian Border Bill 2015 and the Customs and Other Legislation Amendment Australian Border Force Bill 2015. These bills, as we've heard from people on this side, are an important step forward in the coalition's plan to protect Australia's borders. This is particularly important to my electorate of Solomon, as we bore the brunt of boat arrivals due to the previous Labor government's failed border protection policies. During the Rudd-Gillard-Rudd era, the boats flowed in, in as Labor opened the floodgates to the, to the people smugglers. As the number of illegal boats carrying, um, or, sorry, as the, as the number of the boats uh, surged, over 800 boats carrying over 50,000 people, Territorians were forced to uh, deal with Labor's complete and utter loss of control of our borders. As Labor's failures spiralled further, my electorate and its surrounding areas ended up with five immigration detention centres putting strain on my community's support services. And as I've said in this place many times, the former Labor government was more interested in delivering detention beds than they were in delivering hospital beds. Yeah. The ambulance services in my electorate were strained. The hospital services in my electorate were strained. The police services were strained. The fire services were strained and the tourism industry was definitely strained. All strained from a bad Labor policy which took advantage of Territorians' goodwill, of whom we have always welcomed people from a diverse um, background. We have got one of the multi, most multicultural communities in Australia, and we love it. As I've said before, things were so out of control, Mr Deputy Speaker, that in my electorate, the Department of Immigration rented out an, an, a whole CBD hotel, converting it to a temporary immigration detention centre. Our naval patrol fleet in the top end was stretched to the brink, having to escort a constant stream of Indonesian fishing boats and their human cargo to Christmas Island. With the changing of government, however, we have stopped the boats, and we are, are now in the fifth consecutive month of no successful boat arrivals. Mr Deputy Speaker, this is what good policy looks like, not a floodgate approach that was assembled by those opposite. And still, Mr Deputy Speaker, their response to the problem was to strip $700 million from our Border Protection Agency at a time when this money was needed most, after causing an $11.6 million blowout in border protection costs. Operation Sovereign Borders has meant that people are no longer dying at sea, unlike, the Labor, unlike, unlike, unlike when Labor were in charge. Under their watch, Mr Deputy Speaker, as you know, 1,200 people died at sea. This stopping of boats through Operation Sovereign Borders has also meant savings for taxpayers through detention centre closures. The people smugglers are now going out of business, and that's something I'm really pleased about. Now it's time for the coalition to move forward and look to the future. With a projected growth over the period of 2013-14 to 2017-18, air cargo consignments are estimated to rise by 80 per cent, and sea cargoes by 20 per cent, and international travel by 25 per cent. On top of this, cargo supply chains and international travel routes are set to become more complex over time. Not only is travel and trade growing at an exponential rate, but we are tackling an ever-increasing threat to Australian uh, communities posed by serious and organised crime. While our border protection agencies are doing an exceptional job, the current uh, operations will not be sustainable for protecting our borders beyond 2020. Clearly, something has to be done, and the Coalition's next step in ensuring safer waters and safer borders is the Australian Border Force, an establishment under the already consolidated Border Protection Services, which aims to give a sustainable future to <coughs> excuse me, border security as the growth of the management of our borders increases.
The streamlined approach is being put forward by the coalition and ensures a future in border protection and continuing on the promise we made to the people of Australia before the 2013 election. <coughs> Excuse me. The changes made through the establishment will ensure that there is the correct balance between maintaining the integrity of Australia's border, borders and also fostering any legitimate trade and travel movements to and from the country. Further to this, these changes will bring efficiencies and cost advantages through a collaboration of investment to secure Australia's borders, saving taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars. And it's expected that over the forward estimates that the Australian border force will generate $100 million in savings. With these savings, Mr Deputy Speaker, a reinvestment is available to be made to create an intelligence-led mobile technology-enabled force, the Australian Border Force, operating under a strategic border command. This will help to facilitate the trade and tourism, but at the same, same uh, merit keep importers, <coughs> exporters, tourists and Australians safe from those who would do us harm. The Department of Immigration and Border Protection and the Australian Customs and Border Protection Services have already been amalgamated into a single consolidated Department of Immigration and Border Protection. Under this department, we will establish the Australian Border Force. Having drawn together the two existing agencies' functions, we uh, will show a collaborated Australian Border Force with the ability to operate the border, undergo investigations, ensure compliance and enforcement in relation to illicit goods and illegal visitors while also managing detention facilities and removal activities. This consolidation, Mr Deputy Speaker, will ensure stronger borders, increased national security and much needed boost to Australia's economy. The Australian Border Force itself will be the front line of our border security and most visible to Australian public and to international travellers. This task force will be a unified <coughs> Excuse me, multidisciplinary front and most visible at airports, seaports and remote and regional international locations. It will, perform, it will provide and perform deterrence, compliance, enforcement and investigations across customs and immigration, detention and removal of goods and people um, entering and leaving Australia illegally, offshore processing and returned community programs and status resolution, all in order to protect and secure our borders. The Australian Border Force will also be responsible for the tactical functions of all customs and immigration border operations and control. This border control function within uh, the task force will also include a strategic border command looking after operations on land and a national Border Targeting Centre, Border Protection Command, looking after maritime operations. There will be a frontline immigration uh, border function, remote area patrols and a national uniformed enforcement response effort. The Australian Border Force will work with a range of Commonwealth, state, territory and international law enforcement and intelligence agencies in order to, provide, uh, to perform these very critical functions. These will include such agencies as the Australian Defence Force and the Australian Federal Police. A portfolio secretary will have overall management responsibility for the Department of Immigration and Border Protection's operations and its missions. A commissioner who will report directly to the Minister for Immigration and Border Protection on national uh, border operations will also command the Australian Border Force and will be appointed by the Governor-General. This appointment uh, under the Australian Border uh, Force Commissioner will have the responsibility to enforce customs, law and collection of border-related revenue. The Commissioner and the APS employees in the Australian Border Force will be able to exercise powers under the Customs Act of 1901, the Migration Act of 1958, Maritime Powers Act 2013 and other Commonwealth laws. An Australian Border Force College will also be developed, 
allowing for foundational and specialised training to occur for those within the Australian Border Force, as well as um, external agencies. This policy, legislation and strategic uh, roles of the Department of Immigration and Border Protection will establish a framework within the Australian Border Force will, which will operate with corporate functions to be integrated. These bills ensure that the highest standards of integrity and professionalism as they introduce new employment, integrity and information protections requirements for the employees within the Australian Border Force. Through a professional integrity framework that has already been established in the Australian Customs and Border Protection Service, the Australian Border Force will also be required to successfully complete an organisational suitability, suitability assessment and mandatory reporting of, these, of serious misconduct and any corruption. These measures will ensure that the employees of the Australian Border Force work within the law in a job that requires the most utmost integrity and professionalism. Moreover, these bills provide safeguards to ensure a safe working environment by requiring employees to undergo an alcohol breath or blood test or a prohibited urine or blood test. These will be particularly so for the employees who are in high risk areas as to strengthen the integrity of all employees within the organisation and to ensure a safe working environment. These test me uh, testing measures are in line with current policy and practice within the Australian Federal Police the, through the Australian Crime Commission, the Australian Customs and Border Protection Services and also the Australian Defence Force. Under the provisions of these bills, serious misconduct will not be tolerated. Where serious misconduct is suspected, the Secretary of the Department of the uh, Australian Border Protection Force Commissioner will also be able to defer the date of resignation of the employee up to 90 days to give them the time required to investigate any suspected breach under the APS Code of Conduct. It is found that the employee, if it is found that the employee has been proven to be in breach, such as the case of corruption or a serious abuse of power, a termination of employment sanction will be imposed. This type of termination under the Public Service Act of 1999 would result in the ability for the Secretary or Australian Border Force Commissioner to make a serious misconduct de declaration excluding any unfair dismissal review of termination of employment under the Fair Work Act of 2009. Part of these bills also establishes information protection that prohibits any unauthorised disclosure of protected information. Any breach of this will be punishable by up to two years of imprisonment. This Australian Border Force will provide a multidisciplinary service and a single entry point for traders and travellers with changes to be implemented in a phased approach to allow for detailed planning and transition, not a rushed and botched job like uh, that of the, of the previous Labor government. But Mr Deputy Speaker, these bills will help continue the good work and the policies that the coalition government has been achieving and has been implementing. We have a plan and we, make, we made a promise to the Australian people to fix Labor's chaotic mess that it left behind after dismantling the very successful Howard government's border protection policies. We are sticking to that plan, Mr Deputy Speaker. We will continue to provide Australia with safe waters and safe borders. And I would like to put on record my thanks to the current uh, Minister for Border Protection and Immigration, uh, Minister Peter Dutton, and to the former Minister Scott Morrison for their uh, very good work in this area. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, I commend the bills to the House.